Bears. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, Sheree Morgan will be joining us. She is a professional Vancouver-based matchmaker, and we're going to talk about the Olympics and the opportunity that it provides for singles to meet that special someone. Or at least that party time! Welcome back to the show once again. You've met her on our program, I can now say, many times, because she has been on many times. Cherie Morgan is a professional Vancouver-based matchmaker. We're going to talk about all kinds of things today, including meeting new people, re-entering the dating world, where to start, and my first question, Cherie, how are you, first of all? I'm great, but you are so dead tomorrow when Fiona comes back. Oh, I know. I'm not scared of her, though. Everyone oh, yeah, assumes I'm really? scared of her. Just because I run whenever she starts getting mad at me doesn't mean mm -hmm. I'm scared. That can cover. That's all it's I It's called say. a strategic withdrawal okay. is what it is. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good. Uh, really exciting time in the city right now. And, and before we get into all this and, and how much fun it's going to be and what an mm -hmm. opportunity for people that are, that are maybe sing single, let's talk about what you do as a matchmaker because I don't think we've, we've gone into it enough. What is, it, what is a matchmaker? What do you do? Okay, so... First off, I'd like to just explain quickly the difference between a dating service and a matchmaker. A dating service uh, guarantees you dates, so they will throw a number of dates at you and hoping that one will stick. A matchmaker doesn't limit you to their, their data pool. They search for you, specifically for you. Um, so it, it, a matchmaker's been around for years. So what's the process when people uh, contact you and, and do you just sit down with them and sort of get to know them mm -hmm. and, and get an idea for them? I start out with a, a, pr a pre-screening first. They can come in, they ask me anything they like about how I do my searching and so on. I get to know them. I get to find out first off and most importantly, are they ready? Right. Because they may not be ready. <laughs> if they burst are into you totally, tears. Are you totally up front with people oh, or yeah. are you like, you're not ready? Absolutely. So what happens Absolutely. if people aren't ready? Do you help them get ready? Well, I can suggest different areas that they might want to work in. Like I said, if they burst into tears when I ask them about their last relationship, unfortunately, they're <laughs> You're not ready. Not. I can't help I'm them. sorry, you still have the grieving process. Exactly. To go I can put them in front of all sorts of people, but no matter how good of a match that person might be, if they're still dealing with that baggage, yeah. it's not going to work. It's they're just going to carry it. It's going to become a vicious cycle and the next relationship isn't going to work and the next person's going to pay. And and as people go through this process with you, because uh, it can be a process, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily that first hit, uh, yeah. are there suggestions? Are there are there sort of, uh, you know, to help people refine their approach or to help them get better at it? Because yeah. dating's a skill, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I do get uh, information. I, I talk to them before they both meet. I, I suggest to meet and it has to be agreeable on both sides. Uh, after they have their meeting, uh, I then talk to both sides and say, yes or no, what do you think? And they tell me, yes, you know, he's a really nice person, I'd like to meet, see him again, or no, you know what, I don't think it's a great match. Fortunately, because I do spend a lot of time, I don't throw people out quickly, I don't yeah. just throw dates out. <laughs> I've never had anybody say to me, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm grateful for that, but it does take a little bit of time, it's not instantaneous. Yeah, well, and I don't you know? want to... Um I'm trying to think of a, a, a better word, but there is, I guess, a, a stigma that people attach to needing assistance when it comes to dating. Right. Uh, but to me, I mean, we already talked about it. It is a skill. You know, if you're not good at it, if you're not having success, why wouldn't you go and get some help from someone who's a professional? That's exactly it. And it's interesting that, that it's probably more men that have that Oh, why? Why? Uh, imagine. Men, why? Uh, imagine. Why? And, and I know we're coming, and I'm sorry, I apologize right now. It's a bit ego based in that <laughs> they don't want to they don't want to admit that maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a yeah. professional help them out. But it's interesting that the men that have come to me are businessmen. They are either professionals, they're very educated, very evolved, really know what they're looking for. They bring a lot to the table and they're looking for a great partner as well. Um, those men get it. Yeah. Because in anything else in their life, if yeah. they're not an expert in it, they get yeah. somebody else who's an expert. Help with so why taxes, wouldn't you? Taxes, you get an accountant. If you need help with tennis, Absolutely. you get a tennis coach. Absolutely. The number one thing, though, that I do get from anybody that comes to me is that they want it to be private. Yeah. So when you see these eHarmony and all these other things, yeah, and they've got private. people on, and and they're saying that they were matched. I'm sorry, but yeah, I'll I'll go out and say chances are those people are actors. <laughs> because. <laughs> Sheree, you're bursting my world. Oh, I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry. Because honestly, people still want to keep it private. And, and that's, uh, you know, a number one thing that I do is that everybody's search is private. And, you know, I don't nice. run around and say these are my clients and so on. Yeah. Um, 
It's so important. why they don't want to go online dating, besides we've covered online dating and what I think about it, it's, yeah. it breeds a throwaway mentality. It's not conducive to, yeah. to actually finding a okay, relationship. Okay, let's talk about some things because there are going to be a lot of people uh, coming to the city it's an uh, exciting. in another month or so. Uh, so this is going to be an opportunity for people to meet new groups of people. Uh, how do you do that? How do you, how do you meet new people? I mean, is How there do you meet new people? First off, you have to step outside. You have to go outdoors and be into the middle of all these but, people. But video games, oh, no, oh, come on. <laughs> How often does this come? This, yeah. That we get this many people coming into town. And we're talking about locals, we're talking about tourists from all over the place. Yeah. If you want to meet a plethora or a variety of people, get your butt out there. Don't complain that there's, you, you know, it's expensive. There's a lot of free yeah. venues out there right now. Yeah, I've got a tons. list of, of a whole pile of free things that you can do. You can yeah. watch the games, you can you can go out and have a drink, you can go to a restaurant. Yeah. There's, there, there's and a if a guy's looking for a girl who loves hockey, and you're watching in a public forum, you know, at one of the parks or one of the venues, a girl watching the Canadian men's hockey exactly. team, you know you found the girl that you're looking but for. But it's not enough just to go out there. You yeah. have to actually, so women, I encourage the women to put, as I, I mentioned before, put the welcome mat out. Make sure and make eye contact with people that they want to talk to. Do it to everybody because you never know. They may introduce you to their friend or their yeah. a family member, somebody. Just socialize, period, with everybody possible. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the practice, right, in a lot of ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be for a romantic situation or anything else, but just practice engaging with people and having a nice conversation. Absolutely. Do it with no expectations. Go out there Crazy. just to socialize. It's socializing. Uh, and it's like networking. Yeah. You know, we do it for business. We know how to do it for business. It works for business. Do it for your social life, right? Go out there, be pleasant, you know, okay, strike so up conversations. When you've met that person, uh, how do you, you know, if you decide that you like them, uh, yeah. how does that next stage progress? It's kind of, because that's always the sticky point. I know, I remember when I was single. When you were single? Back in the day. The <laughs> uh, you know, there's always that, that moment where you have to kind of make a decision on whether, you know, you want this to lead to another date, whether you want to engage this person outside of wherever right. you met them, all those other things. How do, you, how do you introduce that subject without creeping everybody out? Okay, I'm going to try and, and put this out to men in general. Women that you really do want in your life to build a relationship with are going to want you to make that move. They're going to want you to take that extra strength. They are attracted to men who are confident. So a man that says, even though he's had a great time, you've had a great time and so on, and wants to see you again, just put it out there and just say, you know, I really had a great time. Can, can we, we go do out this again? Can we do this again? <laughs> you know, would you like to do, you know? Yeah. And, they, and it gives the woman the opportunity. Don't, and if you're going to do that, and you take their number, and you say you're going to call, don't not call. <laughs> There's all these rules, oh. right? Is it 48 hours? If you're not going to call, don't take the, don't number, take the number, for right. God's sakes, because it just makes you look like a schmuck, right? There you, you go. You know, women, you know, we're kind of weird that way. If, <laughs> if you tell us you're going to do something, we expect you to do it. But this is a huge opportunity. There's going to be so many people out there. Yeah, have fun. Have fun, yeah. for God's sakes. Go out there, smile. You know, interact with everybody, yeah. no expectations, and also make sure you get your best foot forward. Nice. Don't go out looking like, you know, <laughs> women put their makeup on, do their hair, dress up a little bit, Boys, put your nice jeans on. The world's know? coming to Vancouver. Put away the Ed Hardy. Get out there. Have some fun. Dress nicely, Sheree. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you Thank so much you. for coming by and joining us. And if you are looking uh, for someone to take your dating to the next level, she is an excellent candidate to help you with your matchmaking, Sheree Morgan. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, Matthew Harrison, president of the Actors Foundry and also a very well-known actor in his own right, is going to join us, talk about some of his roles. And also, if you're an actor or want to be an actor, how you can maybe break into the biz. We'll be right back. Stick around.